Built in 1927, this is the oldest section of concrete paved highway still in service in the state of Oklahoma. And it's about to be paved over with asphalt. So this is a one last look at what is known as Bates type standard paving, which was developed in the early 1920s after World War I. And in this state was used commonly from the beginning of paved highway construction in the 1920s until sometime in the 1950s or early 1960s. And although I can't demonstrate this, a uh, characteristic of the Bates pavement was that the edge of the road was uh, several inches thicker than it is at the middle. This highway, since it was built in the 1920s, was built to a width of 18 feet, two nine-foot lanes uh, with no shoulder. There was actually a specification for a soft shoulder of about 10 or 12 feet on each side for the ground to be graded in places where it was not uh, already level with the highway. There's some other interesting uh, features of this type of highway construction, and we'll take a look at one of those. Uh, the expansion joints are spaced at intervals of 50 feet. And so here we have one of the expansion joints uh, built into the highway. The center line, on the other hand, was not built with a fixed expansion joint like what you see going across. It was built with a natural weak point. A piece of corrugated metal was embedded in the roadway with its topmost edge about two inches below the top of the uh, pavement. And this creates a natural weak point in the pavement for the longitudinal joint to occur. And uh, you can see this very clearly looking here. You can see that the uh, crack in the middle is not straight. It meanders. And this is a common characteristic of this type of paving. And it's very easy to uh, detect even when it's been overlaid with asphalt because the asphalt will tend to um, develop the telltale cracks as the uh, crack propagates through the asphalt to the surface because it's been laid over. The other thing you'll generally see is the roads have been widened and you will see a crack appear along the edges where the extensions have been added. This is a very durable type of paving surface. There's still a lot of these roads in use. A lot of county roads were paved with this Bates standard. A lot of state highways were paved with this Bates standard. A lot of the U.S. highways were paved with this Bates standard. U.S. Highway 66 in the state of Oklahoma was paved with this Bates standard. Uh, this section of roadway predates most of the U.S., in fact, all of the U.S., old former U.S. 66 sections of roadway still on the state highway system in Oklahoma that have not had asphalt overlaid over the concrete. So it's very uh, significant that this is the oldest concrete still on the highway system within the state. And it's about to be paved over. Uh, this is located in northern Noble County on what used to be U.S. Highway 77. It is now State Highway 156. This is the southern leg of that L-shaped route that runs east-west. Uh, just beyond that hill and several hills in the distance is the town of Marland. And behind me, where the sun is unfortunately uh, in the view, uh, is what would have been known as the Three Sands Junction, which would have been the historical southern terminus of U.S. Highway 177. Uh, so this was at one time the main route between Oklahoma City and Ponca City. And most of U.S. Highway 77, the original 1920s routing of it, between Guthrie and Ponca City, is still drivable and on the original paved alignment.
This was the first highway in Oklahoma that was paved from state line to state line, the paving being completed in November of 1930. Uh, this predates the complete state line to state line paving of U.S. Highway 66 by several years. Let you have some good views of the of the road here. It's a very interesting form of construction. The uh, culvert was also there's several of these old culverts along the highway, and very frequently, until sometime in the early 30s, they would stamp the date of construction on the culverts, as you saw on that, that one there. It's also possible occasionally to find right-of-way markers that have a bronze uh, shield on them. These generally date from the late 20s into the early 30s when you do find them. I think the earliest one I've seen constructed that was dated was 1928. And these will have a bronze, these will be a concrete um, structure, very short in size, with a uh, bronze shield embedded in them with the date and the project numbers stamped in them. I've not seen any on this section of highway though. Okay, the clouds have disappeared. I mean, the sun has disappeared under a cloud, so I can show you this direction a little bit. There are very short sections of maybe a couple hundred feet here and there along this um, stretch of highway that will have some asphalt over them, but for the most part, about 90% or so of this road is the bare concrete, such as what you see here. I believe this section is about nine miles long that's still not been overlaid with asphalt that's still bare 1920s concrete. And it's a very nice section of road. As you can see, they've erected these windmills in the recent years, and those windmills have been directly responsible for the rapid deterioration of this road, what with the heavy construction traffic that was traveling on it during their construction. Uh, this road was in very good condition before the um, the windmills were were built and it was a very simple matter of routine driving to travel at about 65 miles an hour on this stretch of highway and have it be in some cases much smoother than the new construction which is a very very interesting for such old pavement to to still give such good uh, service but it was built in the 1920s they they knew how to build things back then. Um, I, I don't have any doubts about that. Anyway, if you've stuck it out this long, thank you for watching. I'm not sure how much you can hear me now with, with the wind having picked up, but I'm glad you uh, stopped by and got to see this bit of history before it gets asphalted over. Uh, there's quite a few bypass sections of highway alignment that are now county roads in the state. And of course, they're not in any condition like this is. This is in very good condition. So, from Northern Noble County, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and thank you for watching.